Hello, it's Martin from Wisely Automotive. All of us here totally understand that when you are looking to buy your first EV and you are cross shopping and you are trying to understand the whole electric side of the car, it can be quite overwhelming. And frankly, we haven't found a single video which would encapsulate everything you need to know. So that's the reason why we are making this one. To get started, you need to understand the basic concepts of electricity. I hear you, you are not a technical person, but take a deep breath, we are going to go through this together. Even as an engineer, it took me quite a long time to find it intuitive, but I will try to make it as simple as possible. You just need to imagine electricity as a flow of water through a pipe. Throughout your house, there may be piping of different sizes depending on what it's needed for. And that's exactly the way to look at electricity. The diameter of the pipe you can view as voltage. As you probably know by now, the unit of voltage is volts. And the electrical current is quite analogous to the water flowing through a pipe. And the unit is amps. The reason why I'm bringing both of these up is because they interact in a very important way. So if you imagine the pipe we have, and underneath it we are trying to fill up a bucket with water. That's the same as trying to charge a battery from the grid. How quickly the bucket fills up depends on how large the pipe is and how much water is flowing through it. And that's exactly the way to look at the charging rate. It's the product of voltage and amps and the unit of it is watts. Now what you've probably heard of in the context of household appliances. Because these cars have massive batteries in comparison and use a lot of power, we usually express it in terms of kilowatts. And kilowatts and watts are pretty much the same unit. The only difference is the scale, just like when converting from grams to kilograms. So for example, if a charger is showing that your car is at 500 volts and it's charging at 100 amps, if you do the algebra, you get the result of the charging rate, which is 50 kilowatts. All of this for now is only showing how fast the battery is getting filled up at any given point. But what we are really interested in is how full the bucket or the battery is. For that, we need to look at the total energy charged. So we are looking at how many kilowatts the battery is subjected to over a period of time. So if we want to use hours, it's the number of kilowatts times the number of hours, which gives the unit kilowatt hour. If you've been browsing through EV spec sheets, this should ring some bells. So for example, if a car is plugged in and charging at 50 kilowatts for exactly one hour, it will receive 50 kilowatt hours of energy. That's the equivalent of liters of water in our bucket or liters of petrol for that matter. Now, unfortunately, life is not that easy because BMW decided to express all of this a little bit differently. For that, we need to go back to the fact that a kilowatt is the number of volts times amps times the hour. And we can't forget to divide by a thousand to get the correct results. And here you can see how BMW decided to express their battery capacity in the i3 using amp hours instead of kilowatt hours. So if you want to convert from amp hours to kilowatt hours, all you need to do is multiply by the battery voltage and divide by a thousand. The last theoretical thing to discuss is the difference between AC or alternating current and DC or direct current. Anything you plug into a home socket is fed by AC, but the batteries can only accept DC. So the little lecture is over and now you are actually cross-shopping cars. You, for example, check out a BMW i3, which can charge at a maximum of 50 kilowatts. But some newer cars can charge up to 100 kilowatts. And the charger by your work, which you plan to use once in a while, is indeed a 100 kilowatt charger. So what happens then? The good news is that you can use any charger as long as the connector fits. And we will talk about connectors in just a second. The charging station always communicates with the car before the charging starts, so they can negotiate what power to charge at. So even if you turn up to a 100 kilowatt charger in a car which can only accept 50 kilowatts, it will receive the maximum safe charge. So in this case, 50 kilowatts. You don't have to worry about frying electronics or anything like that. When a spec sheet of a car says 100 kilowatt charging rate though, it doesn't mean it will always charge at 100 kilowatts. It depends on many factors, like temperature of the battery, how full the battery is and so on. To better visualize this, we have to go back to the bucket being filled by water example. 
So if I gave you an empty bucket and told you to fill it up as quickly as possible, what would happen is that at the beginning you could start pouring a lot of water in. As the bucket fills up though, you have to start easing on the amount of water going in. And finally, if you want to fill up all the way to the brim without any spillage, you literally have to put in a drop of water at a time. And that's kind of how a battery charges as well. Generally speaking, when it's empty, that's when you are going to get the advertised speed. But closer to 80 or 90% you usually get only half at most. And as I said, one of the other conditions is temperature. Batteries like to be charged when they are warm. So for example, if it's a cold day outside, you jump in the car, even though it's empty, when you try to charge a cold battery, it won't charge as fast as one which has been driven 200 miles and has had the chance to warm up in that time. Next up, as promised, let's discuss the different connector types. About 10 years back, when the whole EV thing was quite new, there were two main connector types for charging slowly. The Type 1 or the Type 2. Type 1 is still in use today in the US, but Europe has officially set the Type 2 connector as the standard, so all new cars get that going forward. Most slow charging stations in the UK are not tethered. That means that you have to bring your own cable to plug the car in. That's fantastic because that means that even if you have an older car with the Type 1 connector, you can always get a cable which is Type 1 on the car end and Type 2 on the charger end. Regarding rapid charging, so the really big, quick chargers which you find for example at motorway services, because they supply so much power they come with their own cables built in. There is CHAdeMO, which is a Japanese standard. If you look at it head-on, it looks a little bit like a flower. The most common car in the UK which uses the CHAdeMO plug is the Nissan LEAF. The European alternative is CCS, which stands for Combined Charging System. As the name suggests, it builds on the Type 2 plug and adds two extra connection points for the high power charging. When I say high power charging or rapid charging, I mean charging at rates above 50 kW and pretty much always delivered using DC. This means that cars with CCS only really need one charge port and when you charge on one of the slow chargers, the bottom two prongs are just left disconnected. CHAdeMO is not available for home charging or slow charging, so those cars always have two separate connectors. So for example, a Type 1 and a CHAdeMO or the Type 2, which only handles slow charging and CHAdeMO separately for rapid charging. The last thing which needs to be mentioned here is that Tesla is a bit of an odd one. Tesla decided to use their own proprietary connector, which is essentially a Type 2 plug, but it is capable of DC rapid charging on Tesla's own superchargers without any extra bits added on. Um, why did Tesla do this? I guess they wanted a smaller, sleeker connector, but now on their newer products, they are in line with the EU standard, so all new superchargers are getting CCS cables, and the newer cars, like for example the Model 3, come with CCS port out of the factory. If you drive one of the older Teslas, you can always get a CCS adapter, so you can utilize the CCS stations throughout the country. A very important word of caution though, because we see this mixed up very often, I'm deliberately separating slow charging and rapid charging. In the beginning of the video, I did say that the car always communicates with the charger and decides how much power it can take. However, this means that if you plug in a car which can rapid charge at 50 kW and slow charge at, for example, 7 kW, into an AC charger, so a home slow charger, which is one of the higher end ones which can deliver up to 22 kW, the car will still only charge at 7 kW because it's charging on AC, which is a separate system from the rapid charging system. Hopefully, makes sense. The last topic to master before you become an EV expert is how the consumption can be expressed. This is one of the areas where everybody got creative when the industry was quite new. And now different people and different companies all state the consumption their own way. But by and large there are four main ways. First one is kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. This is very similar to for example liters per 100 kilometers which is quite common in mainland Europe. So that's what you will most likely find in quite a few of the German EVs. 
The alternative which Tesla uses is watt hours per kilometer or watt hours per mile, depending on whether your system is set to metric or not. I suppose that would be similar to milliliters of petrol per kilometer or per mile. So in concept following the previous one with units of energy per distance, just scaled a little bit differently. With these three ones, the lower the number the better, because you are using less energy to cover a certain distance. The fourth units are miles per kilowatt hour, which can be viewed as derived from miles per gallon. So how many miles you can cover on some unit of energy. Assuming you want an efficient car, you want this number to be as high as possible. Generally, anything over four miles per kilowatt hour is considered excellent, but obviously this depends on the size of the car and the time of year. As an example, if I know that the efficiency of my car is four miles per kilowatt hour, and it has a 30 kilowatt hour battery. To get the idea of the range on a full charge, all I need to do is multiply those two numbers. So four times 30 gives a theoretical range of 120 miles. And that's it, main topics covered. I genuinely hope this has not been too confusing and has clarified some of your questions when being new to EVs. But as always, if you're not sure, ask in the comments and we will do our best to answer. In fact, if we get many similar questions or suggestions to explain things a bit differently, we may do a slightly more refined version too of this. But that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.